Hi guys and welcome back to the Bronte Book Club. As usual with my Bronte Book Club videos, this video is sponsored as part of my role this year as Bronte Society Young Ambassador and I'm making book club videos throughout the year and today I'm going to be discussing Jane Eyre. This was the book club read for May and June and I can't wait to discuss it with you today because I actually loved it so much more this time round. It was my second read of the book and although I liked it the first time, this this time I really really loved it and I can't wait to dive in on the discussion. So Jane Eyre was published for the first time in 1847 under the pseudonym Currer Bell and it took the literary world by storm. It launched Charlotte's career and it was one of the books that really did launch all of the Bronte's careers because even though Wuthering Heights and Agnes Grey had a publishing deal it wasn't until the publication of Jane Eyre that both of them were released. It tells the story of a young orphan girl called Jane Eyre who at the start of the book is being brought up by her aunt and her awful cousins and she is sent away to a school called Lowood where she is again mistreated and is brought up in appalling conditions that are unimaginable now and as the novel progresses you follow Jane as she becomes a governess and goes to the home of Mr Rochester who is a very enigmatic figure and it is a bildungsroman which means that it follows the protagonist Jane from when she is very young to when she comes of age so you follow her as she changes and grows as a person and you really do see her grow up as the novel goes on. I'd like to discuss a few themes in today's video, some not so obvious ones such as Jane Eyre and her relationship with equality and the figure of Bertha Mason as well as the gothic and I'd like to link all of these together with Jane at the start of the novel versus where she is at the end of the novel. One of my favourite themes in Jane Eyre and one of the ones I was most interested to discuss when I read it this time was equality and Jane's relationship with the people around her and how she views herself in relation to them. At the start of the book when Jane is still living with her aunt her treatment towards her aunt and her cousins and in return their treatment of her is a very interesting dynamic because at times Jane is very outspoken, she's seen as a very naughty child who doesn't know her place, she's supposed to be very grateful to her aunt who has taken her in and doesn't want her but still looks after her and thinks that she treats her as Jane should be treated. Through Jane's behaviour we can see that her cousins are treated much more leniently, maybe because they are biologically related to their mother, Jane's aunt, and the fact that Jane's aunt didn't want her, it was in fact her uncle that made her promise that they would keep Jane because she was an orphan. One of the reasons that Jane Eyre was called coarse and was seen as such a bad book when it was published is that it was published during a time of political upheaval when change was happening and so it was said to have the possibility of causing uprising and it was seen as something that was immoral because it seemed to say that it was okay to push against your status because Jane becomes a governess and elevates her position and works her way up from orphan to being a valid human being. She often has to prove herself during the novel, for example when Mr Brocklehurst, such a despicable figure who just gives me the creeps when I read about him, he says that she is a figure that they should watch out for, she is somebody not to go near because she might taint them in some way and ruin their religious paths and in fact the religious teaching behind Lowood School and the school that Charlotte Bronte herself attended that was very similar to Lowood says that children are figures of evil and they have to be taught ways to improve themselves and to make themselves more moral. Children are blamed for a lot of bad things in the world and so Jane has to prove herself as a figure who should be respected and who is just as equal to the other pupils even though she has been singled out. And then when she becomes a governess there are many scenes where we see Jane not being treated 
as an equal, such as the scenes with Blanche Ingram and the other families that Mr. Rochester invites over. And I particularly love the scene where Jane draws a figure of what she believes Blanche Ingram to look like and then does the same for herself and compares the two images and say that she will never be good enough for Mr. Rochester. She doesn't look like these because she is plain and obscure and little and she is poor and her wealth is another thing that really sets her apart and this is something that I think is perhaps key to her marriage to Mr. Rochester. During the first marriage attempt that goes horribly wrong, Jane and Mr. Rochester are not equals. He has all the money and the status and the position and she is just a governess. However, once Jane flees and comes into her inheritance, we then can see in the ending chapters of the novel that Jane and Mr. Rochester are more equal. One, because of Jane's money, and two, because Mr. Rochester becomes blind, and so Jane has to lead him about, and she has not a superiority to him, but she becomes a figure who nurses him and looks after him, and he no longer physically or financially has to look after her. The figure of Bertha Mason, characterised as the mad woman in the attic, is also a very interesting person to look at, and does also a link to Jane and equality. She's described in the book as a vampire, as a clothed hyena, as it. She doesn't even get to be her or she. She is it. She is less than a person. And this is because of two things. One, her Creole heritage, which people often look down upon because she's from the West Indies, but also because of her mental illness, which is very much looked down upon. She is seen as some kind of monster. And this does fit with gothic tropes. If we look at books like Frankenstein, where the monster is also dehumanised, is seen as a lesser being. And in many ways, I think we can draw comparisons between Mr. Rochester and Dr. Frankenstein. Even though Dr. Frankenstein creates this other being who turns into a monster. Rochester does not treat Bertha in a way that would be accepted now. It wouldn't be seen as acceptable in any way and it does highlight the differences in mental illness treatment now and then. But also because of the way that Rochester talks about Jane. She's described as a fairy and a sprite and she is somebody that is also otherworldly but in terms that are more acceptable than those that Bertha are described in. Bertha and Jane are very similar similar whilst also having lots of differences too. But one of the scenes that I think really shows their similarities is the scene right at the start of the novel when Jane is confined to the Red Room and I think that this does mirror the attic that Bertha Mason is confined to and both characters are locked, they are trapped in a world without freedom and neither of them are understood. It's arguable just how many aspects of Jane Eyre can be considered feminine feminist but I think that one interpretation of this is the moment when Bertha throws herself off the burning Thornfield Hall. She is actually escaping that patriarchal confine that she has been in and is escaping Rochester and does lasting damage to him. And I think that that is quite a powerful image. And whether you agree with that or not, I do think that there is some closure in the ending of Bertha escaping a fate that is almost worse than death not because she has a mental illness but because she is locked up because of it and because she is seen as a figure who is worse than human. Many of the themes and settings in Jane Eyre are gothic in nature such as Thornfield Hall which is this very imposing building with its own ghost in the first Mrs Rochester even though she's still alive she still haunts the building. Her laugh rings out constantly and you're not really sure whether she is real, whether she is just great Paul who is a cover or whether she is a ghost and is haunting the building. I also love the image at the end of Mr. Rochester and Jane talking to each other even though they are hundreds of miles apart. They hear each other's voices and give each other hope when they're not sure if there is hope anymore. And that supernatural element reminds me of supernatural elements in Wuthering Heights and there are definitely many links with Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre when you think about the way that ghosts are presented, whether they are real or not real, and the supernatural in 
things like the voices and Jane's comparisons to being a sprite or a fairy. I think one of the best things about Charlotte's writing is her ability to weave the gothic with Christianity and paganism too, and so the combination of the three creates this very beautiful language and this very interesting style that is rich in imagery and tone, and you just know Jane once you get to the end of the book, and Charlotte is just the most incredible writer and I don't think I'd fully appreciated that until I'd reread Jane Eyre again. I loved my reread of it following Jane from a young girl who was looked down upon to a young woman who is able to stand her ground and consider herself an equal. So I hope you enjoyed Jane Eyre if you read it for the book club. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the things I've mentioned in this video or any other interpretations you have of the text and in July and August we are going to be reading the complete poems of Emily Bronte and I would recommend this edition of the complete poems by Penguin Classics which is edited by Janet Gazzari but any edition will do and I'm going to be doing an overview of all the poems and also mentioning a few specific ones in my discussion of it but you can also read some of the poems online so there's lots of places that you can find it if you'd like to join in. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!